Okay, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome to episode 31 now of the Coders Startup Podcast. And uh, this week we are bringing you uh, a wonderful topic. We're going blast from the past and bringing back an old topic of SEO, only this time we're going to be, uh, you know, not hot wiring it, what's, what's the supercharging it, if you will, and, uh, and bringing in some really cool advanced stuff that I don't think I've ever heard on a, any other podcast before, probably some blogs, some some experts have blogged about this before. I would say definitely they have, because otherwise, how we know about it? Um, unless Carter, the marketer Johnson, is Mr. Crazy with, with respect to SEO, which I'm sure he is. But um, yeah, I haven't heard anybody else talk about the stuff on podcasts, so um, I'm just gonna go ahead and, and and say that we're the first and we're exclusive right now, and uh, we're awesome. Right. So there you go. So having said that, Carter, the marketer Johnson, is joining us for the week. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing great. We've been, uh, we, I feel like usually our warm ups are like 10, 15 minutes and we've already been talking like 20, 30, just Maybe. having a fun time. So great, great stuff today. It's, it's awfully cloudy and rainy, so I can't think of a better place I'd rather be than on the show talking about great fun stuff. There you go. It's nice and sunny, but cold here in the great white North. So as always, anyway, so we'll, uh, yeah, so SEO is going to be the topic of this conversation and um, we're going to be covering probably two, but maybe more, it depends on how uh, off topic Carter's sites go, which is fine. I love doing off topic stuff. Um, so I, I, you know, I'm just going to, I'm going to try to make this into an episode where Carter says more than I do. So I'm just going to hand it over to him <laughs> and let him take it away with the first, uh, yeah. what are they called? Schemas or something like that with respect to, to SEO stuff. Yeah, we're going to be talking about that first uh, schema markup, schema markup. Um, and uh, yeah, these are these are two two things. They're uh, pretty advanced in the SEO world. A lot of times, you're going to hear the generic, you know, make sure you have header tags, make sure your images are optimized, make sure you know interlinking. Um, so you know, I'm just going to introduce a few topics that uh, my team and I we've been playing around with. And uh, hopefully, if you have any interest, then uh, you can do some more research or reach out to me. I'd be happy to talk to you about it. Um, so the first thing is the, uh, the schema markup. Um, and what this is, is basically, uh, it was a collaborative, collaborative project between uh, Yahoo, Bing, and Google, I believe. And you can read more at uh, schema.org. But it's a way to actually categorize uh, content that's out there. And so when you're doing a markup, you'd want to do this for like your blog or your website, whatever it is. Uh, but you can use this, these content tags, so to speak, to let the search engines know, hey, you know, this is an article. This is the author uh, of the article. This is uh, the URL where the article is. This is, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And what's interesting, why this is so powerful is there's been tons and tons of research studies that show Google gives favorable treatment to sites that are using this. Uh, and last time I checked, the last credible source I saw, it was something like less than 3% of overall websites actually utilize uh, the schema markup, rich snippet type of data. Um, so if you really want to differentiate yourself and get out there and um, kind of just give yourself a, a little leg up, I would suggest doing this. And a lot of people have played around uh, with their own rankings and, and just experimented with what this can do. And I read a report last week and they were, they were actually saying that, uh, man, I wish I could think of who put out the report. But when they added this, they saw an average increase. They did nothing else. They saw uh, nothing else but added the schema markup um, they saw an added increase of four uh, positions in the organic rankings, which is huge. If you look at the average click-through rate, um, if you're sitting like on spot 10 on page one, moving up to spot, spot six, that's going to probably double your click-through rates. Um, so very, very powerful stuff. Uh, in addition, it's just something that all search engines have said like, hey, do this. It helps us. It'll help you. And you think about that because very rarely does Google actually come out and say, do this and it'll help your rankings. Like very rarely. We had a moment earlier this year when they talked about um, just mobile uh, and why your site should be uh, operating efficiently on mobile devices. Uh, and that was one of the rare times. And then, of course, this markup stuff is, is another uh, rare occasion when they have said, hey, do this. So, And I find it, I find it a little bit ironic that people are so... Um, 
interested in SEO. People always talk about SEO. People say, I want, uh, you know, my site to be SEO optimized. They pay for SEO services, which is evident by Carter and his thriving business that people, there's clearly people and money out there that's willing to, uh, you know, put it towards SEO services. And yet only 3% of the population is using something like this schema markup stuff, which when I look at it, so from a programmer's perspective, um, I'm looking at my screen right now on schema.org, uh, which is what uh, Carter said uh, where it existed. And I just went to the get started section and they call it micro data, but all this micro data is that they, they outline, it's just tags, additional tags that you add to your HTML. So for example, uh, in the thing that they have, they have like a little div tag that outlines, you know, the movie avatar with a header and it says, you know, director, you know, science fiction, blah, blah, blah. But what they're saying is that, if you, if you come into this as a, a search engine, you see a div tag, an H1 tag, some span tags, and some content inside of there. It has no meaning to a, uh, a search engine. But to a human being, they look at that, they see avatar, they say director, James Cameron, blah, blah, blah. Um, we immediately know that they're talking about a movie. We mm -hmm. immediately know that we're talking about, okay, here's a director of the movie. His name is James Cameron, and then he is born this year, this month, whatever. Uh, and then it says science fiction. I know that's the category of the movie. So I know this because I'm a human being. I have a brain that can put all this together and associate things. But, uh, you know, search engines, try as they might, they're not as smart as us when it comes to this kind of behavior and activity. So all it is is just markup that we're adding mm -hmm. to existing data to tell the search engines what this data means. So absolutely. Yeah, for, and for you that, don't, sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say to the advantage of you, Trevor, and all the other coders and people with tech backgrounds out there. Um, this is something I remember, you know, when I started learning about it a while ago, I remember mentioning it to you and I was like, I just can't wrap my head around this. Like I cannot figure out what they're saying for me to do. I can't figure it out. And it took tons of hours of just reading over and over and dumbing it down to a level that I could understand. Um, but you know, all the coders out there, you guys are a lot smarter than me. You're going to be able to apply this like that and instantly uh, put it to use. Um, so cool stuff, really cool stuff. Really cool stuff. And I, I'll, I will also add, um, I mean, you can, you can go to schema.org and you can read the getting started stuff and they tell you all the different tags that you can add, um, you know, item type or item scope, item mm -hmm. prop, embedded items, et cetera, et cetera. But um, for me, excuse me, for me, the, the easiest win, the quick win for me was to go and get a plugin for this. Um, so what I essentially did was all I did was I outlined my blog articles to say, okay, here's the author of the blog article, which is me, Trevor Page. Um, you know, it is a blog article that teaches something. So it has a category that they have that they outline, um, you know, you know, just outline, here's the body of the blog article, here's the photo, here's the header, um, here's an image that represents, you know, all, all these sort of common elements that I could put across all my different blog articles. But I have, I don't know, maybe 70 different blog articles, and that would be a big pain in the butt to go through each one individually. So I was like, there must be someone out there who's, who's you know, created a plugin for this. And sure enough, there was. So I installed this plugin, which did all this stuff for me, um, called Schema Creator. Uh, it's by mm -hmm. Raven. So uh, mm -hmm. if I were to, I think it's got raventools.com, but you can just go to um, your WordPress plugins and just look for schema creator. And I installed this, I don't know, maybe two or three months ago. And mm -hmm. since I've done that, and I, I'm, I'm sure Carter has, has also had uh, his hands in this, but um, uh, since I've done that, I believe my overall rankings have gone up. Uh, mm -hmm. if you can, you know, Carter's doing some SEO for me, so he'll know more about the, the numbers cause I haven't been looking into that, but can you, can you guesstimate how sort of much my rankings have gone up in terms of the search rankings? You know, it's hard to tell. Uh, and I know that's a, a bland answer that no one wants just cause yeah. we were, we're, you know, we did a lot of on page stuff. Mm -hmm. um, we didn't do any off page stuff, but we did do a lot of that on page. Uh, and I think the combination of that, uh, along with, you know, you doing the markups. Um, I mean, you've seen probably. Uh, the last three months, a modest like 8% increase, I'd say, in overall yeah. organic keyword rankings, which, you know, considering we're not being super aggressive with it, um, 8%, I mean, that's, that's a lot of exposure. That's a lot of impressions. Um, that's a lot of, you know, hopefully clicks. Uh, yeah, I mean, especially, especially considering the vast majority of my traffic is organic. So, I mean, mm -hmm. the 95% of my traffic, 95% of the 40,000 I get every month is organic. Yeah. So you increase that by almost 10%. That's an almost extra 4,000 a month. 
totally so take that any day, every day. Totally. And I, you know, I'm an SEO guy, so I'm always going to make the argument for why you should invest in SEO. But uh, you look at the trends of what's happening in search. And um, right now you're seeing that AdWords have actually increased an average of 8% in terms of actual cost, while the actual click-through rate for them has drastically decreased. Uh, more authority is placed in organic searches, more uh, sales transition, they come from organic. And it's one of those things, once it's going, it's like you pay, you pay for one click. Let's say you're paying $8 and you get you know, 50 of those a month. Um, that's great and all, but then you gotta start all over the next month where if you can get something ranked, yes, it's gonna take money, time, resources, but once it's there, I mean, some of those pages, you know, I, Trevor, you know this, they rank for years upon years that it's just on autopilot, which is so, so beautiful. Yeah, that's um, my, my entire business right now, which is a little bit scary for me, but my entire business is is completely dependent on organic search history yeah. or organic search results that I get. And, um, and I by no means would say place all your, your eggs in, in the basket of SEO because there could be some crazy algorithm that comes along, algorithm update, and boom, you're hit. Hopefully, if you're producing quality content, if you're not doing spammy black hat or gray hat type of techniques, you're going to always avoid those and yeah. you're going to actually excel. But let me give you an example of just a company that's um, got hit when nothing seemed to be doing anything wrong. Uh, back in 2014, one of the updates uh, targeted really thin content like pages. Uh, so eBay which you know was populating very well in search engines for any products, the pages aren't that content heavy. It's true. And they saw such a drastic hit <laughs> in the actual um, organic traffic that it knocked off, I think it was, it was somewhere between 10 to 15% of their overall revenue intake. Like we're talking enough money that deteriorated the market cap of a publicly traded company. Ouch. So, yeah, I mean, you know, think about that. It's it's pretty crazy what things can do. Um, I mean, with that being said, though, I'm still all in for SEO. That's yeah. what I love. Yeah, there's um, far more good stories about people doing it the right way and getting the results the right way than the... the it comes back just producing quality content and it'll happen. Yeah. It's so frustrating, but it's exciting too. Like I'm it seeing is. on my blog, uh, my blog site, all these new long tails that just keep popping up every day and I'm like... We'll even search that and you know, and they click have your we, stuff. Have we talked about the word long tail? Do we know what that means? Can you define I think it? we have, but just so people know, um, so typically when you look, you use Google keyword tools and other tools out there, you'll see the very like the strong keywords. So like um, programming with Java, that would be one. A long tail would be how to program with Java uh, as a high school student or something like that. It's a very long uh, descriptive. Uh, what's cool about the long tails is they typically convert better because someone is looking for a very specific answer. They know what they want. Um, so if you do get that traffic, typically you're going to see higher conversions. Uh, and more, what's that? Or more engagement. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, and the cool stuff about that is, you know, it's long tails just naturally form as you, as you put out more great content. Um, so very cool, but we're, we knew we had diverse and we're completely yeah. off topic. So, that's cool. That's fine. Um, but was that a good enough intro for the, the schema yeah, I mean, markup? I, it's, it's, it, you know, schema markup. We're not going to tell you all about the entire complex complexity of what it is because it would, it's kind of a waste of time. Take yeah, the concept, do some research on your own. You've got the, the WordPress plugin that I talked about, uh, schema, what was it called? Schema something. Yeah, and I'll tell you which one I use. I use Seamless Schema. Seamless, seamless. Schema. Okay, nice. Yeah. I, I was Schema Creator by Raven is the one I, I used. Yeah. So you've got the tools. You've got the knowledge. Um, just go out and apply it now, right? Just see yeah. how it goes and, and see what the results are like. And let's talk about, um, this will be a good transition for the next subject we're going to sure. talk about. Um, but when you do apply this, this micro data or whatever, these tags, what happens is that's when you see like in the search engine, if you'll search like a movie and it'll show the reviews and stuff like that, um, Google populates these rich snippets. And that's like what you're seeing a lot of times when you search anything. Um, and that brings up the next thing we're gonna talk about, which is Google answers. 
Um, and this is a topic that not too many people are talking about. I have had to search far and wide for any authoritative figure in the, the search business um, who's talking about it. Like even like the big heavy hitter search engine land, Neil Patel, people like that haven't seen anything from them. Um, Google answers are uh, when you type in something and you'll see at the top, it could be like the recipe when you type in hard boiled eggs, or it could be if you're looking for a definition. Um, so you want to know what is Java programming. Mm -hmm. You'll see that. Uh, what's really cool about this, uh, a few months ago, Google actually filed uh, a new patent that a lot of people are pointing to as an indication that the knowledge graph and returns like this in organic rankings are heavily, heavily going to be a part of their business going forward. It's a very strategic move by Google. Um, so like right now, it used to be, I think like two years ago, you would see less than 5% of total search queries return something like this. Now it's close to 20%, just to give you an idea of how much that is actually increasing. Um, so how can you use this? Well, I wish I had an exact format. I don't, I don't know, you know, an exact solution, but I can tell you some things that I've seen that Trevor and I were talking about that are really pointing to this is, this is kind of the right direction. Um, the first thing is you want to make sure that when you are actually answering a question that you're setting up a nice quick introduction snippet um, that identifies what it is that you're, you're answering. So, uh, for the Java programming, you know, if someone types in what is Java programming, your content, you would want to lead off with Java programming is dot, 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 and give your snippet there. Um, that is a heavily favored factor. When you look at the answers that are being populated, it's very one, two sentence definition oriented. The next thing you want to do is, uh, use, and we were talking about this, what is it called? Lead tags? What are, what are they, Trevor? Lead tags? Um, what, what are those tags? What are they called? You mean the, from the schema markup that we're talking about? No, no, no. The, the things I, I was showing you before the show. Oh, the sorry, the LI tags, which is... LI. Yeah, uh, you know, li, well, not line item or... I guess it'd be line item or um, yeah. list item number, whatever. It's for, yeah, yeah, HTML tags. So either a UL or an OL, so an unordered list or an ordered list. Then you have the list item, the LI tag. So anyway, yeah. go ahead. So a lot of these answers actually have those tags and that's what Google is, is pulling from. So figure out ways to incorporate that. You know, if you're answering a specific question, lead off the article with, um, you know, a quick like blank is, and then use those lists. Maybe it's a numbered list. Maybe it's bullet points to define that. Uh, but Google really likes that organized kind of structured uh, data to pull from. Yeah. And um, I just want to, I'm going to interject just cause I'd love to interject. Um, I, I just did a quick search cause I remember I, I did this search recently, uh, cause I was doing, um, an, an article on, uh, object oriented programming mm -hmm. and I was trying to get examples of other object oriented programming languages. Um, so I was like, okay, you know, for example, other object oriented programming languages like, and then I wanted to say, you know, Java, C++, uh, you know, Ob Objective C, blah, blah, blah. And I wanted to get the list of them. So I typed in object oriented programming languages. And I remember that I got this, what you call a, the rich snippet. Um, mm -hmm. The one that I got, I typed it in to check it again. It does not have any LI tags in it. And I said, okay, mm -hmm. well, that's interesting. So I went to the page and then I looked at the HTML code backing this page. And I see what it is that pops up in that search result actually uses an XML schema, or not XML, uh, the markup schema that we were just talking about previously. There you so go. It uses a meta tag. It says meta item prop, which is one of those uh, tags that you can use for this schema markup. And it mm -hmm. has, you know, item prop equals name, and then content equals what is object-oriented programming, right? There and then go. below it, it has another meta tag that's item prop description. And then in the content, it gives the answer that shows up inside of Google. So it looks like if you use a combination of an item prop name and an item prop description, each of those with a content property, um, that's how you can get uh, potentially that to show up inside of the rich snippet. So maybe there's a, there's some connection there between. Well, the two. And let's, let's test my, my third point here yep. uh, and watch you prove me wrong on this, but I'm finding too that in order to be featured as this, this Google answered, 
your web page has to have authority and has to be in the top 10 for that return. Is this okay. on where they're pulling the data? Is the page on? Uh, yes, top, it's in the top four. Okay, there you go. So I've yeah. seen everything all the way down to like nine. Um, but yeah. it looks like it's very hard to uh, occupy that space if you are not in the top 10. Um, so how you can apply this, let's, let's think about that. Yeah. If you are, uh, like how we're going to apply this to Trevor's site, we're going to go through and do a full audit, look at all his organic rankings where he's already on page one. And then we're going to make sure anything that's relative to some you know, question, like the examples we've given, um, it has the proper markup. Uh, it's near the top of the page. Uh, and it's just, you know, it's there in, a, in an easy to grasp, uh, rich snippet type form for Google. So, right. Uh, and, and to, again, interject, I know I keep cutting. No, off. keep, keep going. Um, keep conversation. I just want to sort of solidify your, your previous thesis, um, or hypothesis, which was to use the word is. So I can confirm that they are using that, that strategy. So they have in their item prop name, it says, what is object oriented programming question mark. And then in their item prop description, they have object oriented programming. So exactly as it said in the question, it's the exact same text object oriented programming. And then in brackets, OOP, which is exactly what they had in the content above. Uh, it says object oriented programming in brackets, OOP is, and then it says organized around objects rather than actions, blah, 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 blah. So, um, it uses though that keyword is to that define is. It. for whatever reason, that is a hot trigger. And that I'm, tr trigger, yeah. I'm trying to find things that prove against that. Uh, who, who disapprove that yeah. and I can't. But I, so far it looks like that. And that's what the article that we found was talking about, right? They said they use an action word or something. Like, yeah, strong, strong action. Um, yeah, so this is, again, this is something not, I don't see anyone else really talking about this. Like I said, I, I searched far and wide for just, uh, you know, basic information about it. Something that I'm going to be experimenting uh, with, hopefully, applying it and getting some really good results for some people. Um, but take action. Let me know if it works out for you. If you're seeing anything, um, love to talk about it. Yeah. And then, uh, Oh, I had something that I wanted to touch on as well with this particular subject. And then of course I let my mind wander and it's gone now. God, what was I going to say? Um, anyway, wh whatever I'm going to be for sure. I'm going to be testing this stuff out. I'll, we'll, we'll look at, uh, I mean, I think ideally one of the one of the best ways to do this. Correct me if I'm wrong, Carter, is to get a, a keyword where I'm not ranking in the first um, the first uh, item on the, the the first page, right? So in position one, I think ideally you could see a, the biggest benefit if I take a keyword that I'm on the first page, but I'm at the bottom of the first page. Oh yeah, right. Yeah, and then that yeah, way I can the this, this actually yeah appear it makes you appear at the top when you do this so it's like you're immediately jumping from the bottom of page one to the top of page one without really doing much at all and they're giving you two spots of real estate and, and if you look at the the click-through rate you know the the top three spots occupy it's like 65 percent of the overall click-throughs so your your top spot averages like 34 percent or something like that so say you're you're sitting on position nine um and all of a sudden you have this snippet at the top as well um in theory, you could occupy like 40% of the click-through rates just because you're going to get about 4% down there at nine and then that 30 plus up there um, in, in the, the Google Answers. So Yeah. And, and when it, it's funny. When you say Google Answers, I immediately think of Yahoo Answers, which is well, completely not what this is. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and Google used to have an answer uh, program or platform, but they yeah. shut that down. Yeah, yeah. this is like... Google direct answers. I'm not sure if there's a rich snippet data, whatever you want to call it, but it's, yeah. I it, refer to it as Google answers and that's what I've heard. People. It's an answer that's appearing. So instead of, yeah, it's the answer that's appearing in the search his, uh, search result right at the top, as opposed to just like a quick little, almost insignificant preview of what could or could not be inside of the article that you may or may not click on. So this yep. is like definitive. Here's a quick and dirty answer to your question, which again might, might not even be correct. Um, as, as this person who we, this article that you found Carter, maybe we should link up this article. Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, to, yeah. I don't think it's a yeah, very yeah. easy, it's like a, you know, North cut with two T's.com slash mm -hmm. how to get in Google's rich answer box <laughs> mm -hmm. all hyphenated mm -hmm. between them. So, yeah. So anyway, yeah. We'll, we'll link that up in the show notes and, uh, and it'd be a, yeah, it'd be good to just to read through it for yourself and get an idea of what it is that, uh, 
that you're getting yourself into. But for sure, I want to do this. And, um, and it, obviously, if it works out, uh, you'll hear from us again. You'll see, you know, this huge success story about all this great, you know, traffic that I'm now bringing in because of uh, Carter's um, scout <laughs> the interwebs about, you know, obtuse or strange, uh, you know, SEO hacking techniques. <laughs> so well, it's cool because I, uh, you know, we find something new like this and I get to apply it to all these different clients and stuff. So it's like, yeah. it's aggregated it always, across all it, these. yeah, yeah. So you might have success, you know, 30% of the time, but you can still count it as success because really in the game of organic, like there's no exact formula. I, if I gave you the exact steps that we do for everything, like it still probably isn't going to work for you hundred percent of the time. It's just, mm. yeah, it's trial and error, baby. Moving type thing. So sweet dude. Well, so now let's, let's move day. into uh, the, the new section that we're introducing into uh, this uh, podcast. Now it was Carter's idea and this plays, uh, this plays very well with Carter's strong suit uh, as a human being, because if you were to, uh, coexist with Carter in one of our mastermind uh, calls that we do every week. Um, you'll, you'll know that he's, he's very well noted for, uh, for this stuff. So we're opening up a segment now in the Coder Startup to focus on sort of Carter's resources of the week. So it's going to be Carter's uh, <laughs> book review of the week and the app review of the week. So yes. having said that, I will let him take it away for his book and app review for this week. Go ahead. Great. And so we get to do both, right? Because I know we were debating, like, should we no, just go for it? Okay, cool. Go for it. So first book uh, of the week, Scaling Up. Um, if you have heard of uh, Mastering the Rockefeller Habits, this is the uh, basically the newest edition of this. Uh, there hasn't been anything written um, in between the Rockefeller Habits coming out. Uh, so that was like 14 years ago. So the author just updated everything. Uh, it's a fantastic read. Um, it is very great for people like me who uh, get so excited about things that they're just shooting off in all directions. It's very good at like, uh, you know, bringing you in and creating um, one page summaries of like, you know, what your 90 day goals are, what you, what, what's on the one year horizon, what's the big uh, hairy audacious goals, 15, 25 years out uh, and really documenting that stuff. Uh, and then also documenting like in your business, all the different segments what each person is doing, who's accountable, uh, what K, uh, KPIs, key performance indicators, people are using to measure to make sure things are getting done. Um, and it's, it's, I would say it's the best read I've had that takes you through the entire step to doing that. Um, before this, I've, I've, I've kind of had just like resource here, resource here, resource here. And this one's like, boom, laid out, very nice. Uh, they've got great worksheets that come along with it. Um, so definitely, definitely check it out. Uh, so let me let me let me take now what you've just said and mm -hmm. see if I can summarize it and see if it makes sense because um, mm -hmm. I think that'd be a good little addition to do. First of all, uh, the name of the book again is Scaling Up by uh, I'm not going to butcher that name. Uh, Vern Vern Harnish. Yeah, yeah, yep. Vern Harnish. There you go. Um, <laughs> So there you go. Great. Now we, now they can actually find it on Amazon if they want to look for it. Mm -hmm. um, so you said the book is all about, um, cause for me, that, that was sort of screaming like metrics and numbers, right? Is, is it all about, at least that was part of it about, you know, cause you said uh, guys. a lot of metrics, a lot of numbers, okay. a lot more clear documenting and clarifying the focus areas. If that makes sense. So it's how to, where to find the focus in your business, where you should focus. So in your business. it takes you through, like, it talks about, um, like there's a lot of, I'm going to look just at the overview just to, to kind of flip through. Like it, it, there's one of the things that it does where, uh, it basically, uh, talks about like your own, uh, personal why in your different areas. So like wealth relationships, all this other stuff. And so you get that like locked down so you can really see how that, that you know trickles through your business and why that's yeah, important. Absolutely. Um, and then it talks about you know like your strategy to getting to your ninety day goal. So it like breaks that down into okay. a level of like this is what we're going to focus on. This is what we're going to drive home over the ninety days. Nice. Um, and then it has like the actual um, executive executive like habits. So this was based on a lot that uh, Rockefeller himself implemented in his business, which eventually led to Exxon Mobil, one of the largest companies ever. Um, and so it talks about those habits and like incorporating them into your business and how to do it in a sense where they stick versus trying to do them all at once, like doing two every 
uh, 90 days or something until you master those. Um, it really gets, when you have a team, it gets them all on the same line. I've ordered this book for our team. Nice. Um, so we're going to be doing it together uh, and really just kind of fine tuning stuff. Um, yeah, it's a great there read. We go. Great Very read. good. See, when I, when I do, when I've seen or heard other podcasts or, or video, whatever's talking about book reviews and stuff, they kind of give the overall gist. And then for some reason with me, this could just be my mind. Um, I just forget about everything that they just said about the book. And it's like, I don't, I didn't have anything that I could really anchor into. So I think this will be an interesting little thing. If we do this every time or not, I don't know. Um, We're going to do it every time. Where I try to rehash everything that you just said. So yeah. that I can really, yeah, get it out and, and see if it, if it makes sense for, you know, what I took from it. And, and then I think it's good to just look at something twice because then it really sinks in. Absolutely. Love Excellent. it. Love it. Cool. So let's talk about the app that uh, caught my eye this week that I'm super, super excited about. Um, it's called Crystal. The website is crystalnose.com. Crystal what? Uh, Crystal Nose, C-R-Y-S-T-A-L. K N O W S dot com. Forgot how to spell. Yeah, gotcha. Cool. Uh, this is very, very cool. If you're reaching out to someone, um, what it does is it basically, I, you know, it's magic. I guess it's a bunch of APIs that are bundled together and pulling all this data. But it reach, it, it shows you if you're reaching out to someone. Like they use Mark Cuban as the example on their site. It shows you what uh, the tone you should use, what words, style you should use. Um, points you should hit on, uh, and they actually have a plugin for Gmail that auto corrects as you go along. So let's say you're trying to reach out to Tim Ferriss. Crystal is going to pull all this amazing information about Tim Ferriss. Like it's going to tell you, like you know, Tim Ferriss likes to talk about business. Tim Ferriss likes to talk about outdoors. Tim Ferriss uses his tone. Blah blah blah. And it's going to able. It's basically using empathy in your emails, which is something that is hugely, hugely um, undervalued, so to speak, when trying to develop that connection. Um, so a very, very cool tool. Uh, my team and I, uh, actually my, my project manager, uh, Kathleen, she introduced me to it. I need to give her some props because it's freaking awesome. And uh, I'm super excited to, to, uh, to use it. The, I'm, I'm going through, the, I'm looking at the website right now. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I totally understand uh, what you're talking about and what it's talking about, but I'm trying to figure out how it actually implements it. So does it search the web for the person or does it somehow know who the person is? Trevor, and, yeah. that's like you and I. I don't know how electricity works, but I don't <laughs> and I need light. Like that's how it is. So you programmers, you coders out there, you guys have fun deciphering how they do it, but put it to use. This is so. So this is they they uh, tout themselves as the biggest improvement to email since spell check, um, which is an I, interesting I it. an interesting little header headline to have, but that doesn't tell me anything about the product. So if I were to give a review of crystalnose.com, K N O W S, um, I would say that they need to use a better headline or at least have another headline underneath it. Um, <laughs> Anyway, Crystal tells you the best way to communicate with any coworker prospect or customer based on their unique personality. Fair enough. But yeah, I want to know if they, if they like, does it only work with sending it to Gmail people or people using Gmail? Because I see a lot of Gmail screens here opening up. Um, do you know if it's specifically for that? I don't know. I don't think so. No, I think it's just, you know, they have the, I don't think you necessarily have to use the Gmail plugin. Okay. Um, but I think that's just the easy way that kind of like auto corrects as you go along. Uh, but it's, it's similar to like, you know, reportive and I don't want to review two apps at once, but reportive oh. like pulls all those data, of the personal profiles. I think what this does is takes it a step beyond that and looks at what they've shared um, to kind of decipher what you should and shouldn't mention what tone you should use, et cetera. Yeah. Cool. Eh? So it says when, when you write an email, Crystal tells you the words, phrases, style, and tone you should use to reach the recipient in a way that they like to communicate rather than your own. How you know what's interesting? We need to test this between ourselves. Let's yeah. use Crystal to write back and forth and see if it's, if it's something that, that we would like. Yeah. And another thing is, so I tried to sign up for it. So I clicked sign up because I want to see how much yeah, it costs. 
It says sign up uh, with your LinkedIn account is what's recommended. Mm. So they're recommending that you sign up with your LinkedIn account. So I wonder if maybe it pulls some information from LinkedIn, perhaps. That w- that's what I would sort of... Um, I'm sure it does. Yeah. Um, the other cool thing is when you get like the actual profile of the people, um, and I saw, I think it was like yesterday, it was interesting because I was so psyched about this tool and I saw in uh, our Beyond 13 group, someone posted it. And if you look at the profiles that it pulls, it like gives you this whole psyche breakdown. It's like, man, forget going to a therapist. I just want to have this to like analyze how I, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. There you go. So crystalnose.com. I'm going to sign up right now. Um, look at this. So it, it, it's going to get access to my full profile email address and my connections. So full profile includes experience, education, skills, and recommendations. So who knows? Maybe that's where it pulls some of its data um, or all of its data. Uh, very, very interesting tool. I'm, I'm, I'm very much looking forward to using it. So thank you, Carter. See, wasn't for, it fun? Every week is, we're going to do a book and an app because it's so much fun. Yeah. And it was funny because when, when Carter brought this up, my hesitation, I was like, oh, you know, maybe, maybe that's, you know, it that could be something that we could, I don't know. And so my hesitation was, God, I don't read a book a week and I don't find a new app every week. And then I realized it clicked. Uh, Carter does. <laughs> oh, this is perfect for him. So there you go. Yeah, this, this compliments my shoe set very nicely. So. Yeah. so there you go. We can wrap up this episode. This has been episode number 31. You can get the show notes and articles and everything that we talked about, links, et cetera, et cetera, via coderstartup.com forward slash 31. And um, also check out, have you made any updates to your your uh, your new I'm blog now? i it every day. Have, have you no really? Idea. I've been bad. I haven't been looking at it. That that can be found at, oh, let me see if I can remember the, the this is your branding on me, if it's good or not. Uh, is it unitedbusinessleaders.com? Yep, that one, cool. or I thought you meant our, my personal brand. And no, no, I mean unitedbusinessleaders.com. Unitedbusinessleaders.com, we got updates, we got good content coming out um, every day. And then uh, M. Carter Johnson posted some fresh stuff on there. Beauty. Jump over, subscribe, I'll be giving away some cool stuff. So, yeah. Very man. cool. So, thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen, for tuning in to this episode of The Coder Startup, and we look forward to seeing you and or having you visit with us via the uh, podcast episode downloader via iTunes, Um, and uh, we'll see you next week. Take care of yourselves, and bye for now. See ya.